Hey guys, today we're diving deep into one of the most efficient, eco-friendly methods of composting out there, bokashi. This is a natural farming technique that allows you to ferment your food scraps and turn them into incredible nutrient-rich soil for your garden. In this video, I'm gonna show you what bokashi is, how to ferment food scraps, why you even wanna ferment your food scraps in the first place, choosing your bokashi inoculant, making your own bokashi brand, how to decompose your fermented food waste, and a few other additional uses for your bokashi brand. If you'd like our free PDF outlining the basics of what goes in the bucket, you can click the link in the description and print off our bokashi and worm bin checklist. But now, let's get started. Bokashi is a Japanese term that translates to fermented organic matter. Unlike traditional composting, which relies on aerobic bacteria, Bokashi uses anaerobic bacteria to ferment organic matter into nutrient-rich compost. Bokashi provides us with a really eco-friendly approach to building healthy soil. You're using what would otherwise become a waste product, and you're essentially turning it into value for your garden. So for zero or minimal waste households, or if you're just trying to reduce your daily food waste, this is a powerful option. Now you might be wondering why go through the trouble of fermenting your food scraps in the first place? Why not just toss them in the compost directly or bury them in the garden fresh? Well, there are actually many reasons, but at the core of the matter, it's efficiency and nutrient retention problem. So fermentation through bokashi pre-digests your food scraps, making them easier for the microbes in the soil to break down. This results in a quicker, more nutrient-rich compost or soil. Plus, the microbes in the bokashi can handle materials that would otherwise attract pests or rot in a traditional compost bin. Specifically, animal proteins, fats and cartilage, dairy products like cheeses and yogurts, cooked foods, all of these foods, if just incorporated directly in your compost pile or dug directly in your garden beds would begin to rot very quickly and the odors coming off of them would begin to attract pests like raccoons and birds. When you ferment these food scraps though, you're doing a couple of things. One, the food scraps will begin the decomposition process in a confined space so they get a head start before going in the ground or a compost pile. This means that you're basically giving them a chance to break down fully before pests can get at them. The other thing that happens through the fermentation process is that the smell is greatly altered. Instead of a rotting smell, you'll notice a more pickly scent. And this scent is far less attractive to rodents and other critters. Additionally, even if an animal stumbles upon your bokashi fermented food scrap, they're going to be deterred by their acidity. Because having been anaerobically fermented, their pH level has dropped, making them an unpleasant meal for animals, but a great meal for soil microbes. Now that we've covered why you might want to ferment your food scraps, Let's talk about the science a little bit. Bokashi relies on microorganisms to pre-digest the organic material. In store-bought Bokashi brand, these microorganisms mostly consist of what's called EM1, which stands for Effective Microorganisms 1. This is a specific strain of microbes that are able to aid in anaerobic fermentation. Lactic acid bacteria, or LAB, and other beneficial microbes can also be used to ferment food scraps, which is what I'll be showing you how to make. All of these microbes thrive in an anaerobic environment breaking down organic matter by fermentation. Through this process, you end up saving many of the nutrients in your material compared to an aerobic decomposition. If you just left the material out in the open or immediately put it into the compost heap. Essentially, Bokashi acts as a pre-digester, making it easier for the soil to absorb and use the nutrients. Now let's talk a bit about the materials. You have quite a few options when it comes to how you can apply the microbes to your food scraps. You can buy pre-inoculated bran, which is quite convenient. We've used it plenty. The brand that we've used the most it's called Bokashi Living. You can also purchase Bokashi Spray, which does a similar thing. But if you're trying to do this on a larger scale, both of those can get a little pricey. So if you want to save some money, or if you just want to make it yourself because you're a DIYer, you can absolutely make your own, which is what I'll be demonstrating in this video. Some other benefits to making it yourself is that it gives you complete control over the quality and it potentially allows you to add kind of more diverse strains of bacteria to your soil. Now let's talk through the process of making your own Bokashi brand. This may seem like a difficult process. It's not entirely simple, but it is pretty straightforward once you get the hang of it. The first step is to make your LAB or lab. Lab refers to a Korean natural farming input that stands for lactic acid bacteria. We have another video explaining the full process of making lab, but I'll quickly go over some of the steps here. First, just collect some rice wash water and put it in a jar. This needs to be non-chlorinated water, of course, and ideally you're using white rice to collect a very starchy liquid. 
allow this to sit at room temperature with a breathable covering for two to five days. You'll know when it's ready or when it smells sour and cheesy. Once this is the case, remove some of the liquid, ideally from the center of the jar, but any of it will work, and add it to a gallon of cow or goat or sheep's milk. You could use more or less milk depending on how much you want to make. A gallon of milk will make approximately three quarters of a gallon of LAB. Allow the milk to sit at room temperature for another few days until you see the curds and whey separate. The whey will be bright yellow and the curds should be floating on top. Remove the curds carefully, doing your best not to break up the material and mix it in with the whey. And then carefully decant and strain out the whey and that is your LAB. You can store this in the fridge for a year or two or you can preserve it and keep it at room temperature by adding equal parts brown sugar by weight. If you have 500 milliliters of LAB, you add 500 grams of brown sugar. All right, let's make our Bokashi bran. If you have your LAB in the fridge like me, you'll need to add equal parts brown sugar to whatever you use. Here's the general ratio that I use to make this liquid inoculant. One gallon of water, three ounces of LAB, three ounces of brown sugar if it's not already added. Once you've made your liquid inoculant mixture, you can start incorporating it into the wheat bran. Put the wheat bran in a container that you can mix it in together. Then add a little bit of the liquid inoculant, mixing as you go. Remember that you can always add more moisture, but you can't always add more bran, obviously, unless you have some more lying around. The bran to liquid ratio will be different for everyone based on the exact material that you're using. To give some benchmarks, I used around one and a half to two gallons of liquid for a 25 pound bag of wheat bran. You want the bran to be damp, but far from dripping. It should clump in your hand, but also break apart pretty easily. It should not be sloppy or runny or anything close to that. The bran really needs to stay just barely moist. Make sure to incorporate as much of the bran as possible. You wanna to try to minimize the dry spots in your mixture so that all of the bran is covered in the inoculant. Once this is the case, you can transfer the bran to an airtight bag. For smaller batches, you can totally use a Ziploc bag. And for larger batches, you can use uh, garbage bags. I'm using both just to demonstrate. You really wanna pack the material together so there is as little air as possible. Press all of the air out of the bag you're using. I recommend double bagging it to avoid a mess. Or if the inner bag tears while you're packing it together, you'll be able to preserve the inoculation process. Once you've got this ready, we're gonna leave it in a warm environment for two weeks, and this is gonna allow the inoculation process to finish completely, and then you'll be able to dry the bran for longer term storage. So once the two weeks has passed, you can leave your bran sealed indefinitely, so long as there's no air contact. If you wanna store it a bit more easily, which I recommend, you will simply spread out your Bokashi bran thinly over a tarp or a piece of plastic and allow it to dry completely. This will put the microbes into a dormant state where they can be reactivated in moisture, i.e. when you use them in your Bokashi bucket. You can store this dried bran any way you like, just make sure to keep moisture out so that they don't start fermenting on their own. And that's how you make the bran. Now, in addition to usage in a Bokashi system, this bran can be used in many other ways with great effect. Here are a few that you should probably know about. Bokashi bran is a great addition to worm bins. You're getting microbial diversity into your bin and your worms will thank you for it. Top dressing your soil is another great option. Similar to what LAB does for your soil, Bokashi bran adds immunity through bacterial diversity to your soil. You can incorporate this into your potting mix. This will help your plant starts get a healthy start and help fend off other fungal and bacterial growth that is otherwise unhelpful. You can add it to your animal feed, whether you have cats, dogs, chickens, cows, or any other kind of livestock. This brand is a really healthy probiotic supplement to any animal's diet. And speaking of livestock, you can mix the brand in with your livestock bedding. This has been known to help control odors and provides a healthy amount of bacteria to process and decompose manure. You can even add it into your kitty litter box or potentially even replace it altogether. Definitely try adding a little bit at a time to start since cats can be really particular about what you do with their bathroom. Bokashi brand is really gonna help control the odors from your cat's poop and pee. So if you have a litter box, Give it a try. Now that we've covered those extra uses, let's get back to fermenting our food scraps. So once you've got your bran, whether you made it yourself or you purchased some pre-made, you need a fermentation bucket. The container that you use for your Bokashi composting is really important because it needs to contain a few key features. Number one, it needs to be able to seal airtight. Remember that Bokashi is an anaerobic ferment. 
anaerobic, meaning the absence of oxygen. The second thing is that your bucket needs to contain a leachate catchment component. As your food scraps ferment, liquid will be drawn out and gravity will carry it downward. And if that liquid pools at the bottom of the bucket, it can go anaerobic and mess up your fermentation. If you want to make a Bokashi bucket yourself, you can for fairly inexpensive. You just need two buckets that fit together. I recommend using five gallon buckets like these. Now, similar to a vermicomposting system, you just wanna drill some holes in the bottom of one, not both of the buckets. 15 to 20 holes will do the trick, and this will make your upper bucket the bucket that you place your food scraps directly into. Now for the bottom bucket, you will wanna install a spigot of some kind, and this can be a standard hose fitting or something else. Uh, the main thing is that you want the spigot to sit right at the bottom of the bucket on the side of the bucket so that the bucket can stand upright. This is gonna allow you to catch the Bokashi leachate in the bottom and empty it out as the catchment area fills up. Now you can also buy your buckets pre-made, which is what I opt for. After making my own and using them pre-made, I personally really appreciate the pre-made ones. They're pretty durable and they make sure that there's no leakage. I haven't been able to find the brand that I'm using right now, this one, but I'll put a link in the description to one with the exact same design. Give it a try. I really appreciate the convenience. You might too. These buckets are really sturdy. The spigot works great. Uh, they come with a nice tamper that works well. They're just an all around great option. Of course, there are several buckets on the market that likely work just as well. If you're gonna invest in some buckets, whether you make them yourself or if you buy them pre-made, I recommend that you obtain at least two. And the reason is that once you fill a bucket, in order to finish the process, you'll have to let the whole bucket ferment for an additional two weeks, meaning that you would be out a Bokashi composter for those two weeks. If you have a second, and depending on how much food waste you're producing from your house, a third bucket, you're gonna be able to keep fermenting your new food scraps while you wait for the other bucket to finish. For our family size and the amount of food waste that we produced, two buckets just barely gets us by, and sometimes we have to put the process on hold. Now we're ready to talk about how to actually ferment your food scraps. It's of course a very easy process, it just requires you to do a few things in a specific way. Once you have your food scraps ready, place them in your bucket. Make a layer of an inch or two, but no more. And once you've spread out the food scraps evenly, take a handful of the Bokashi brand and sprinkle it over the top. Then you'll want to press it in with a tamper of some kind. From that point on, you will repeat those three steps. Spread out your food scraps, sprinkle the bran, tamp it down. Once you're finished doing this, simply put back on the lid and put your bucket away for the next time that you add materials to it. I tend to collect my food scraps in a metal con collection tote under the sink, and every few days, I just empty it into the Bokashi bucket. If I have a lot of raw meat scraps, I'll usually add those right away so that they don't start creating bad odors. You'll want to collect the leachate every few days or once a week to make sure that it doesn't fill up in the bottom. This can be diluted and spread over your garden, or more safely, just added your compost pile or bare soil. Sometimes this leachate can contain kind of an offset of bacteria, mostly if you left it uncollected for a little while. So I usually play it safe and I just add it to my current compost pile or in the winter I'll pour it on the garden beds. You can also pour this on a pile of wood chips or in some other carbon. And just in case you were thinking about it, I would not recommend that you drink this stuff. You probably weren't thinking about it, but figure it would be a good idea to say it probably not a good idea to drink it. Once your bucket is completely filled to the top, place it somewhere, preferably a warm environment, and leave it to ferment for two weeks or longer. And this is crucial for ensuring that all of your food scraps get fully pre-digested. Now I've already mentioned a lot of the things that can go in the Bokashi bucket, but I'm gonna give you a mostly comprehensive list here. If you, again, if you want the printable PDF with the checklist of what can go in and what should stay out, go ahead and hit the link in the description for that. Otherwise, here's what you can ferment. Any vegetable and fruit scrap. When you add these, they tend to ferment the best. When they are not whole fruits and veggies, try chopping them up or breaking them up before you add them into the bucket. As mentioned before, animal products. This is proteins, organ meats, cartilage, eggshells, and even bones. If you ferment animal bones, you will want to crush them up a bit beforehand. For chicken bones, if you've made a chicken stock with them, they should be fairly easy to smash between your fingers. For uncooked bones and larger bones like cow and other ruminants, you may have to use a hammer to crush them up effectively. I would say that biochar and mineral extracts are probably a better use for these larger bones. So 
it's possible that that will be a better option, but you totally can ferment them in the Bokashi method as well. It's just that if you don't crush them up beforehand, they may not break down in the soil for a really long time. Another food scrap that you can add are uh, cooked foods, along with solid dairy products, fats, and a small amount of oils, especially if you've kind of cooked the food in them. These are all able to be fermented with the Bokashi bran and spray. And the last thing that you can ferment is plant debris. And the reason that you might want to do this is if you are trying to save up enough nitrogen material to get a pile of compost to heat up effectively. Typically, at least for me, I have a plethora of carbon materials just waiting to be mixed with nitrogen for a hot compost pile. But it's hard to store up nitrogens because they start dying out once you pick them or cut them down. They're losing their nitrogen. Things like comfrey, yarrow, grass clippings, and weeds are excellent choices for compost activators because they contain a lot of nutrients. These can absolutely be added to your Bokashi bucket in order to save those nutrients. As far as things that shouldn't go in the bucket, you will want to avoid a few things. Liquids don't really work. Maybe for obvious reason, they just kind of run right through. Rotten or really moldy food probably shouldn't be put in the bucket. This can throw off the microbes that are trying to digest the other food scraps and you can mess up your bucket if you add them. Something that can be a really great additions to a bucket that aren't necessarily food scraps or nitrogen rich garden waste is activated charcoal. I like to add some activated charcoal throughout the bucket to help charge the char thereby turning it into biochar. Charcoal is a all-around great resource. It can you can use it to help adjust and maintain proper moisture levels and control odors. Bokashi shouldn't smell putrid, but the pickly scent can be unpleasant to some people and activated charcoal can help mitigate that. Once you filled your bucket, you've waited the two long weeks to fully ferment your food scraps, now what? Well, once your food scraps are fermented, you have three main options for how to utilize them. For your first option and the most common and easy option is to dig them directly into your soil. With this method, you can just dig your, some of your soil out, move it aside, place your Bokashi scraps in that place and then cover it up with the soil. Give it just a few weeks and up to a month for these food scraps to fully decompose. This is gonna add a huge amount of helpful nutrients to the soil as well as just a good blast of Bokashi microbes that will really enrich your garden bed. The second option and another common one is to use the scraps as a compost activator. And I've already mentioned this earlier, but compost activator refers to the nitrogen rich material that can help a pile of compost heat up. Hot compost relies on nearly equal parts carbons and nitrogens, and Bokashi is chock full of nitrogen. You are also more than welcome, as I have done multiple times, to add your food scraps to a cold compost pile. There will be a similar effect as adding it directly to this soil. The food scraps will take a few weeks and up to a month to break down. The third main option most people use is to feed their Bokashi scraps to their worms. Now, there are a few caveats to this approach, so you might just want to be a little bit careful. That said, this is a great option. The first consideration that you want to make is how much you feed your worms. If you have a really large worm operation, perhaps you could feed them an entire bucket. If you're operating at a home scale like us, you will probably want to just give them a little bit at a time so that you don't overwhelm them with the food. Second consideration is the acidity of Bokashi. Worms aren't huge fans of acidic foods like citrus and vinegars and such, but there is a solution to this. Crushed eggshells are a great alkaline substance that you can mix in with your Bokashi food scraps to sort of balance the pH levels. You're really gonna to wanna to grind up your eggshells thoroughly so that they all get incorporated. And I recommend starting with a little bit of Bokashi mixed with eggshells and just see how your worms do with it. It can take a little time for them to get used to it, but in the long run, worms and the microbes in the vermicastings will thoroughly enjoy the Bokashi. So those are your three main options, but depending on when you're watching this video, we'll have another video out where we explore four more creative ways to use your Bokashi compost. So look out for that if you're interested in alternatives. And guys, that is it for our step-by-step -step guide to Bokashi. I hope that there's something in here that was helpful for you as you consider your options for utilizing waste streams and turning them into soil. We really tried to cover it all, but if we missed something or didn't explain something that you want to hear more about, please leave us a comment and we'd love to answer those questions. If you enjoyed this video, as always, please give it a thumbs up. And if you want to see more content like this in the future, hit the subscribe button.